very good morning to all of you. Uh, this is the same experiment, the continuation of the experiment which we were doing in the earlier module uh, in a different lab, uh, where we were talking about laser etching of PMMA sheets. The idea there was to be able to use that as a mold, so that you could develop a device and the device uh, could microfluidically operate and uh, do various testing or calibrations uh, for different processes at the microscopic lens scale. So, here in this module what I would like to demonstrate today is basically uh, work on the next step of replicating the shape or the feature that had been produced by laser etching technique and uh, the replication would be like a micro casting. So, therefore, you have to use a soft polymeric material. In our case, we will use material called polydimethylsiloxane PDMS and this PDMS is nothing but a silicone rubber which is otherwise um, commercially available into two different uh, in, into, into two different forms. One of the components uh, is uh, actually a curing agent. Uh, another is a silicone rubber and you mix both of these components together in a certain ratio to obtain the requisite bond strength uh, and the curing agent essentially helps the PDMS to develop cross bonding and eventually it results in a rubber like membrane which comes out. Okay. So, if this is poured on a small uh, laser etched surface, uh, the surface kind of gets replicated and the negative of that is created onto the surface of the PDMS. So, I would just like to uh, recall what we did in the last uh, module, where we actually made a device like this using CO2 laser processes on PMMA and uh, the etching uh, which happened therein uh, resulted in this kind of a feature being imprinted on this surface of depth about close to 14 or 15 microns and uh, various widths or various dimensions of the different parts that you can see on the central chamber, the chambers which are on the sides etcetera. So, I am going to actually take a box where uh, this is a commercially available plastic box and uh, this, uh, this is uh, for the purpose of pouring the PDMS and containing it or confining it over the mold surface. So, whatever you saw here this particular chip that had been formulated, I am going to first uh, sort of paste this on the top of this box at the center and make it immobile and then use that as a casting platform as a mold platform for micro casting the PDMS. So, I am going to first try to fix this using double sided tape over this box and before doing that you ensure that you have another identical box here. So, that whatever amount of PDMS is needed on the uh, uh, on the top of this uh, mold box can be calibrated using this uh, other spare box of identically same nature. These are very easily commercially available in the market. Okay. So, now what I am going to do is to take uh, double sided tape like this. Uh, interestingly, the double sided tape commercially available in the market comes in this form, where one of the sides has a yellow covering on the top and the other side also has adhesive. So, basically the adhesive side is lifted up like this and you can measure how much you need for uh, completing the or cover the whole uh, mold surface uh, and, and try to fix it. So, using normal shear pliers, I want to take small measurement here like this to be able to kind of estimate how much length is needed to cover the whole surface and I am going to cut a piece of this length all the way up to here. So, that it can cover half the surface of this feature very well. Okay. So, I am going to actually now place this feature almost halfway through in this particular tape 
lie you can see here ok. So, the other half can have another piece uh, which I will cut out by doing the same kind of size measurements and uh, what I am actually going to do is try to cover the whole base of this mold uh, in a similar manner ok. So, that and one thing you have to really ensure is that you make it butt tightly uh, to the other tape so that it is one continuity ok. You can see from the back you, you can there is no gap between the two uh, tapes that you have uh, put and then on the top surface uh, there is some projection which is in outwardly manner and I am going to just shear that off. So, that it becomes of the same size as the mold ok. So, we will do this shearing action. see roughly now the size and shape of this double sided tape is such that it is covering the entire lower portion of the mold box and the etching the etched feature is available somewhere on the top surface which you need to micro replicate ok. One has to be really careful about which side you are pasting because this feature itself is very small the only way to feel it is to either rub your nail over it and see if it produces a scratching sound because of the laser etching which has happened in this area or if the features are too small just try to ensure with your hand whether there is a uh, feature of a certain depth and the planarity of the surface is not uniform and that goes on the top side the other plane surface or planar surface goes on the bottom side. So, I just need to pull this tape off from the lower surface exposing the uh, other side of the tape ok like this similarly like this and you are left with the adhesive part now on the lower side which you want to go ahead and paste on the top of this particular box right about in the center of the box as this ok. So, this is how it now looks and you can see that because of the tape it does not go anywhere and when you pour something which is liquid in it there is always bound forces through which the mold might come up unless it has been fixed. So, this we did for ensuring that the mold does not float up because of the buoyancy of the liquid in any event PDMS is a highly viscous thick liquid which will have to offer more bound forces and we need to somehow be able to hold this mold on to the place. So, that the PDMS can go on the top without making it to lift the mold off because of bound effects. So, I am now going to go ahead and uh, make the PDMS solution as I told you there are two uh, parts of the PDMS in which it normally comes. This uh, particular PDMS is from uh, a company called Doconic in Midland and uh, the brand name is known as Silgard 184. So, you have uh, two components one is a uh, uh, Silgard 184 silicone rubber which comes in this uh, uh, tube and then this curing agent and I am going to now sort of go ahead and mix these two in a manner. So, that it the PDMS comes all the way to the top of the box here. So, it can actually cover what is there on this particular mold surface. 
So for that we need a chemical balance like this and uh, uh, we will just try to first measure the amount ratiometrically through weights and then we will just do 10 is to 1, 10 parts of the uh, silicone rubber and one part of the curing agent and then mix properly using a pipetter so that it can uh, uniformly disperse the two phases can infinitely disperse throughout. So, for doing that I first need to cancel or tear the weight of the box the machine and once it has been teared I want to take it out and put a little bit of this phase 1 here. on the surface of this to ensure that it goes all the way to the top. need to be a little careful while handling this ok and uh, in the other part which is in this particular solution here also a curing agent ok. So, first of all we need to weigh this and find out how much uh, this would be. So, this happens to be about close to 30 grams. So, we need exactly 3 grams of this other material to keep it going and uh, so as I told you that uh, the chemical balance here measures the quantity of the, the PDMS uh, at least the silicone rubber part which we have put inside uh, this uh, small box and then we have to mix the curing agent, but before doing that one has to ensure that whatever mold you are using will release the PDMS after the heat curing action etcetera is over. So, the idea here is that I would need to treat this with uh, uh, some kind of vapors or some kind of um, chemical which will formulate a mono layer on the surface of this material PDMS otherwise is highly hydrophobic in nature the contact angle is about 108 degrees. So, one has to have uh, a hydrophobic surface, so that there is a mutual repel uh, repelling action between the two and uh, there are no uh, as such Van der Waals forces which develop between the surface and the, the PDMS and uh, there should not be any stiction why particularly when you are pulling it out that is the purpose of a release agent when you talk in castings you use uh, powder uh, on the walls of the mold, so that the metal comes off without damaging or breaking the mold. In this case breaking is not possible, because the PDMS is a softer material, but yes uh, it has to be coated properly. So, that it should not be that the features entrap uh, a part of the PDMS and it gets broken off that resulting in a bad finished casting. So, mold release is very very important. So, what we are going to do is to use a vacuum desiccator right about here and uh, we are going to use uh, something called HMDS which is commercially otherwise available in vials and uh, this uh, material has to be handled very carefully the HMDS is normally uh, coming in a closed vial it has to be uh, taken to a fume hood something like this where you can break open the cap of the HMDS and transport the bottle all the way into the desiccator and then evacuate it and before doing that you ensure that you put this into the desiccator. So, that the environment given by the vapors sort of does a preliminary treatment of the surface by giving a small coating on the surface. So, as you can see now the processing of the vial is done there is a vial inside which is broken cap and the material that you want to coat with that is the mold everything is inside here in this particular desiccator and uh, there is a pipeline which goes into otherwise a evacuating system a small mechanical pump and uh, that takes care of uh, sort of <coughs> close to 
10 to the power of minus 1 or minus 2 tor vacuum within this particular chamber. Uh, one reason why the vacuum is also engaged is that this material HMDS is highly volatile in nature and the idea is that it should actually come and evacuate or, or come because of the negative uh, vacuum pressure and formulate an environment over this surface including the plastic box, the mold etcetera which is kept inside for a very long amount of time. So, that there is a small layer and in fact, you will see that the layer which is formulated will be visible as a small whitish layer on the top of the surface. So, this process will take about 15 minutes uh, beyond which we will have to examine whether uh, the mold is fully coated and then if we feel that it is fully coated we will go ahead and stop the process otherwise uh, we will have to again recoat it. So, that that small thin whitish layer can be seen on the surface of the mold. So, this uh, right here is uh, demonstration of how the oven functions. So, there is a controller for this oven where there is a set value which you need to set for heat curing PDMS. PDMS uh, as you have seen before has been mixed into two different parts component A and B curing agent and uh, the silicone rubber and uh, you are heat curing it to a temperature of about 85 degrees Celsius for about 40 to 45 minutes and this has to be very precisely controlled. Otherwise, if the temperature is higher you know the plastic container it might just warp and it might just deform and change the shape of the containing mold which is uh, really not desirable. So, what we do is to preset the oven as you are seeing here at 85 degrees and wait for the oven to achieve a temperature <coughs> all the way up to the set point value. As you can see in a little bit quick glance here that the temperature is changing uh, quite a bit and uh, basically the temperature once it achieves uh, the 85 degrees Celsius you have to keep uh, the oven in closed conditions. So, that uh, the temperature is maintained at that particular level. Now, once we are sure that the temperature has uh, been reached uh, the other uh, important aspect is uh, to take out the mold which has been cured prior to this uh, or coated prior to this using the HMDS or the hexamethyl disilazine layer and a release agent layer. So, what I am going to do is to sort of uh, take out the mold from the vacuator and see the mold surface uh, clearly it is indicative that there is a layer on the surface. So, we pour the 10 is to 1 ratio uh, of the curing agent to the silicone primer from the other box that we had earlier taken provision for this purpose onto the box containing the mold. Okay. And so, once uh, this is thoroughly poured and uh, the whole PDMS is transferred it is a very viscous substance as you are seeing like molasses uh, and therefore, it needs to you have to really hold it for uh, some time for the uh, uh, material to be completely uh, loaded on to the other new box containing the mold. So, once uh, this is finished uh, you have to really check what is the level of the PDMS on the on and over the mold pasted on the surface of the box because mind you the mold height has now changed because of the thickness of the double sided tape which has been inserted below uh, the box. So, you have to actually see now what is the <coughs> level of the PDMS on the box if you are happy uh, there is another issue about setting up the evacuator again because mind you when you are actually trying to uh, do this process of mixing agent curing agent along with the silicone polymer. There is a issue of uh, entrapment of bubbles and dissolved air which comes in. So, that air has to be removed because otherwise when it starts heat curing and there are convective currents within the medium there is a tendency of this bubbles to uh, formulate a uh, two phase system 
and bubbles in this manner if they get entrapped into the cured silicon matrix uh, would have a lot of problems regarding optical visualization of the PDMS matrix. So, we place this uh, PDMS now on the uh, vacuum desiccator and uh, wait for a few minutes at high pump pressure for uh, the desiccation action to sort of pull out all the air which is uh, entrapped in the PDMS matrix. In the meantime you also should check the conditions of this gravity fed convection oven which has been sort of uh, now you know stalled at about 85 degrees Celsius. And uh, the way you normally uh, handle is to actually keep a sort of elevated platform which is already pre balanced and uh, there could be uh, an issue of proper leveling of uh, the mold box that you are eventually going to place into this oven. So, normally it is pre leveled by using a spirit level such ovens also have the possibility of tilting shelves. So, therefore, uh, uh, you can actually using a spirit level in a criss cross manner do uh, both x and y uh, in the x and y direction you can check whether they are completely leveled with respect to gravity. So, that the overall PDMS surface can be flat. Now, the uh, it is high time now that this uh, <coughs> desiccation has already happened or occurred and bubbles must have come out of the solution. So, we are go <laughs> going to replace we are going to just sort of take out the mold box along with the PDMS on the top and see what is the condition of that mold box. You can see here uh, that there are bubbles uh, in a way coming off uh, the surface of the PDMS which actually is uh, suggestive of that the dissolved air has really come out. Okay. So, a few more minutes are needed. So, that you can individually bust these bubbles and uh, you have to see that over this mold really are there any bubbles or not. In this case over the mold you have relatively a clean layer of PDMS which you can see and so the idea is <coughs> that once this has been formulated you can put this into the oven in the level plate. There is a level plate here in the bottom corner as you have seen. Okay. So, you just put this over the level plate and the same can be done with the shelves as illustrated earlier. So, that the level of the PDMS over this mold is completely flat in the x and y direction okay, parallel to the gravity and close the oven and wait for about 40 minutes till the uh, PDMS actually achieves the necessary curing action. Because of the opening of this uh, oven for loading and offloading there is a sudden change in temperature as you can see here it again needs to go all the way to about 85 to 86 degrees Celsius, which it has now reached in the PIV control. And uh, we have to wait for 45 minutes, <coughs> so that we can actually have a good cured sample of PDMS, which will later separate from the mold, uh, which has been formulated. And you can see here actually the sample has come out after 45 minutes.